Hey, hey, Rock Loves, Lily Six on the phone with Greg Fox, creator and composer from Renaissance Rock Orchestra out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and it is as fantastic as it sounds. How are you today? I am doing good, Lily. How's Rock Rage Radio? Doing good. We're staying super busy, getting some shows out there, and of course, interviewing some fantastic people. <laughs> Well, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So there are listeners who are familiar with um, RRO, but for those who may not be familiar, why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about what you do? Okay, yeah. Well, Renaissance Rock Orchestra is uh, a collaboration of, of a lot of really well-known and very accomplished professional musicians from bands like White Snake, Guns N' Roses, Black Sabbath. Uh, it literally goes on and on and on. Our last record, uh, which is on Spotify called In Times of Old, it had 27 rock stars on it, oh, wow. including two Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, that included uh, Yes drummer Alan White and the guitar player from Heart, Howard Lee. Oh, very cool. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a bucket list thing for me. <laughs> I'm from Seattle originally, and, you know, so I had worked with a number of members of Heart in different kinds of projects over the years. Uh, my last one in Seattle was uh, a group called Sister Mary that included Pamela Moore from Queensryche, mm -hmm. now that uh, played Sweet Sister Mary. That was and cool. Howard produced that record. And so, yeah, Howard and I had, had done some work before, so it's really nice uh, so many years later to, to work with Howard. I also play in one of the main shows in Vegas, number one musical in Las Vegas is called Radiant the Rock Vault and it's all well known artists from from bands that were there and actually created the music originally including Howard Leach who is the musical director and so uh, I had been working with Howard in that show and uh, kind of turned on to what I was doing with the Renaissance Rock Orchestra and he said man yeah, I'd, I'd love to be a part of that and when he heard the song that I had him perform on which is kind of a very trans-Siberian orchestra thing you know like uh Kind of classical metal, you know, mm -hmm. classical metal. And uh, he played the most amazing guitar solo on that song. So that's, you know, kind of a little bit about us. We originally started, uh, kind of, I started writing uh, in 2014 for the Renaissance Rock Orchestra. And my, I had moved to Las Vegas in 2010. My best friend and my bass player for years, uh, a guy by the name of Mikey Bones, Michael Trevino, said, you got to come to Las Vegas, we got to put a show together. So I was living out in California at the time and went to Las Vegas and had my started, started writing. We had been out to see some Trans-Siberian Orchestra shows and, you know, we were backstage talking to the guys because they were good friends with Mike and Mike was from back east, mm -hmm. lived in Queens. And uh, he knew everybody in the band, he knows everybody. And any East Coast musician, Mikey, knows. And, so he introduced me to them, and, and I was just going, wow, you know, I think I could, I think I could write this material. You know, I, I uh, was raised in classical music, uh, classical piano, and uh, so I thought I could do the same thing, so we started writing it and creating it. Now, unfortunately, in 2017, Mikey Bones passed away. Right. So I lost my best friend and my bass player, and it was a very heartbreaking scenario, and that's one of the reasons it took so long to, uh, to finish up and get our last record completed and uh, also in the same in the same way it's uh, kind of put us behind schedule on this new record which uh, i hope you're going to be playing for everybody soon uh the new record is called the song of hope and it's a five song ep and i kind of uh, changed the personnel and the whole concept for the band for this one but very very excited about the response we're getting okay great yeah, well, we'll definitely play it here at Rock Rage. No worries there. I mean, this the song I've played tonight. I was is the minute I heard it, I was super excited about it. So I definitely I went like everywhere to research you guys, and I'm just like, whoa, that's awesome. So that's definitely right up my alley. I know it's up a lot of my listeners' alleys. So super excited for it. Yeah, very cool, <laughs> very cool. You know, the uh, guitar player on that song is Michael James Romeo from uh, the band Symphony X. Oh yeah, so, okay. Very cool. It's, it's not a wonder, you know, he starts off the beginning of uh, In My Loved Arms <laughs> and uh, with this amazing guitar riff that only Michael James Romney could do. You know, he was ranked one of the top five guitars in the world by Burn Magazine. Mm -hmm. he's, he's just an absolute monster. <laughs> so, have you always been interested in being a musician? 
Yeah, yeah, I was raised in church, and my mom and dad are, you know, every, we were always singing and playing. There was always a piano in the house. I was, you know, sitting at, we had pictures of me sitting at that piano when I was three years old, and I began lessons when I was five. Okay. So, uh, my mom was the organist in church, my dad was the choir director, me and my sister were singing when we were like three and five years old. So, I grew up in a very, very musical household. So, uh, yeah, it was just always around me my whole life, so it was, it was in my DNA for sure. Right, yeah, so obviously and, extensive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and of course, you know, I started, you know, with the, the piano lessons at five and 12 years of lessons. Um, so who would you say are your biggest uh, influences in music? Well, you know, as a keyboard player, <laughs> it's, it's definitely, you know, mostly keyboardists, but, you know, I, I kind of come from the old school of rock and roll, so, you know, I was, I was raised on everything from uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix. Uh, of course, Led Zeppelin um, would be one of my all-time So I had a, a number of bucket list experiences uh, getting to, to meet uh, uh, John Paul Jones when uh, oh, wow. the heart band here was doing the unplugged sessions with John Paul Jones. Mm -hmm. But then also at one of my gigs downtown way back in the 80s, uh, when Led Zeppelin was playing up at, uh, at the uh, Coliseum, right up the hill from where I was playing in a place called Pier 70 back in the day, Robert Plant came down and got up on stage with us, and uh, I had just gotten what a sampler called an emulator. It was one of the very first synthesizer samplers that had, had ever come out, and I had spent the whole night the night before sampling all those great licks from all the old Led Zeppelin records. Do you remember that song? Oh, yeah. It's called... Uh, I think it's called Long Tall One or something like that. Uh -huh. Do you remember that song? Oh, yeah. My, yeah. Yeah, my podcast co-hosts are very big into Zeppelin, so we listen to it all. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Well, it was so awesome we had to get on stage jam with us. So, yeah, I've had some, some up-close personal encounters with some of those guys. And as a matter of fact, I, uh, I also played in a band in Las Vegas that's uh, a Led Zeppelin all-star band called the Moby Dicks. And in that band... We have Phil Suzanne, the bass player from Ozzy Osbourne. We have uh, Doug Aldridge from White Snake on guitar. We also have Jimmy Burkhardt on guitar. We have Brian Tissy from White Snake and Foreigner on drums, and Chaz West, who was the singer uh, with Bonham, you know, Jason Bonham. So that's kind of a fun thing, too, that I do on the side in Las Vegas. Very cool. Yeah, like all my crushes. Like, no big deal. All my musical crushes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, talking about more, a little bit more about influences. Uh, also, you know, Elton John was definitely in there for sure uh, as a keyboard player and, and in that period of time. But then, uh, being trained classically, you know, when I first heard Yes, music of Yes, mm -hmm. I was just blown away by Rick Wakeman. And, and of course, Keith Emerson from Emerson Lincoln Palmer was a big, huge influence to me. He's, he's like the ultimate. But I play a lot more like Rick Wakeman, you know, the mm -hmm. melodic arpeggiated style of Rick Wakeman is, is kind of a lot of the way I write. But you look at all of those influences in the music I write. You know, I wear all the hats. Uh, yeah, I'm the songwriter, the composer, the keyboardist, the producer, musical director. So I am everything there is uh, a <laughs> Renaissance rock orchestra. So I'm carrying the torch for my buddy Mikey Bells. Okay. And you'll hear a lot of his influences on the new record. I think you'll hear a little bit of everything from Van Halen to Dream Theater uh, with some Queen and some Kansas thrown in there. And that's just stuff that comes out of me from my history and, and from my influences. Very cool. Um, so you said there's a new album coming out. Um, do you, When can we expect that? Do you know? April 15th. Oh my gosh, it's so Perfect. close. Yeah, <laughs> we're trying to give everybody something good. <laughs> on tax day I'm there you go deadline. let's give them some music something <laughs> to inspire get them through that day exactly uh, <laughs> um, do you plan on doing any uh, like sort of live streaming or touring with the uh, new album well yes and no okay. uh, I would love to do some streaming and I've been working with a streaming company for several months and negotiating with them to do some live streamings for audiences but we haven't really quite got a team together on that end. And it's hard to say quite what's going to happen. We have a number of top secret things in the works for okay. Renaissance Rock Orchestra. We have been working for several years to get a residency in Las Vegas right. at one of the casinos. And uh, it, you know, it's, it's been a difficult process, but 
right when COVID hit last year, we had a multi-million dollar deal going on and in place, and of course COVID ruined that. Mm -hmm. So that was very disappointing. That kind of wiped that whole thing right off the slate, right off the table. So yeah, I started from scratch and worked real hard to create a new record during COVID for everybody, and the new product is, has been so well accepted by the, the labels that are showing some interest and, and all the fans and followers. So yeah, it's, it's really helped to kind of boost us a little bit and um, it's I just inspired everybody about the whole RRO thing. And we are talking about a residency now in Las Vegas, but we also have another residency type situation going on that I'm not going to say too much about. But okay. It's a pretty big deal. And uh, I, you know, I can't say too much until it's, it's actually um, till the ink is dry on the on the paper. Oh, understandable. But yeah. both. Yeah, both situations are, are very good. So it looks very likely, and I'm so excited about this, that literally within 90 days, it's possible that Renaissance Rock Orchestra is going to be doing live shows. Can you believe it? That's amazing. I would love that. In fact, oh, I am gosh. actually I'm actually coming to Vegas in December, so fingers crossed. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, for sure, by December, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not sure which situation it will be, if it will be right on the strip or if it will be in an out door arena that's all i'm going to say okay <laughs> maybe a little, little bit of it a little bit of a kid that there right well we'll see which which situation lands but it yes, it's very exciting to know that some potential live shows are coming up and to get the band together and they're all just just dying to get playing again of course absolutely and it's so fun to play this music oh yeah it's, it's so fun to play this music now the, the one thing about playing in vegas is you want to do a kind of show that that is to bring all kinds of audiences in. And since we're kind of a new, unbranded act at this point, uh, to try to build the numbers up, we're definitely going to do what I would call a epic rock show, mm -hmm. a legacy rock show with a history of rock. So, uh, in the same way as Rating the Rock Vault, the other show that I spoke for Michael T. Ross from Lee Ford, for uh, Ricky the Rock Vault does a history of rock. We're not going to quite do that, but besides playing our own material, we are going to do some of the most epic rock songs of all time. Very cool. But definitely Cashmere. You know, oh, yeah. Cashmere. Uh, definitely, uh, probably, uh, Dream On by Aerosmith. Oh, favorite so band. Very, ever. very, <laughs> yeah, big, gigantic, epic rock songs. Maybe some Deep Purple, maybe some Who. And, yeah, to, to give it a, a real epic rock show experience. And then you add our Trans-Siberian type material in there. And then the stuff from New Record, which is a little bit more uh, commercial type rock and roll. You know, it's still prog metal. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it has that Queen and, and Kansas influence in a couple of places. So, yeah, we'll mix that all together and make it a really, really exciting rock show. Very cool. I am super excited. <laughs> I am super excited for that. I just got goosebumps over it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I am too. It's been a, a long, hard year. And like I said, I'm just so proud that... Uh, and it was a little unknown. I started the second COVID hit. I'm like, well, what am I going to do? There's no gigs. Right. Uh, there's no work. I might as well create music. It's my favorite thing to do. So I was excited to be able to spend time doing it. But it was a tough record to get done. It took a long time. There was a number of things that held us back. In the end, when it was pretty much complete, I ended up having it mixed down in Phoenix. And uh, the mixing style wasn't quite what I was looking for there. So we ended up going and looking for another engineer and my management company out now. Well, hey, connected us with Brian Maloof, who has done well. He's the guy that mixed the Queen at Wembley. Oh wow! Record. So he's also done Michael Jackson and Madonna. He just did a brilliant, brilliant job. And then I sent it to mastering houses to get mastered, and I had the same experience there. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, my first shot at it I was not happy with it the management company was not happy with it so we ended up taking it to one of the most popular mastering houses out in LA and it, it just, just turned out so fantastic and every very excited about it make sure that everybody goes to YouTube and subscribes to our YouTube channel for Renaissance Rock Orchestra because I'm releasing new videos off this new record every Tuesday and Friday okay very cool so they'll be the to get another one out on Friday. So. Very nice. Yeah, I, that's that's where I did some of my research to um, listen to you guys as well okay. as as well as what was sent to me. But I wanted to get a better feel so I could maybe see you guys and you know 
get excited about it, which I am. So <laughs> they're they're great videos. Yeah, I sure appreciate that. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so the new band, let me show you about who's in the new band if we have time. So sure, yeah, we have time. Go ahead. <laughs> well, in, on this record, I decided to take a little bit different concept than I had on the last one. On the last one, we had 27 different rock stars, two rock and roll hall of fame inductees, some amazing guitar players. Bumblefoot from Guns N' Roses did an amazing guitar solo. Joel Hoekstra from White Snake, amazing guitar solo. Four different vocalists, including Tony Harnell from TNT, wow. Robin McCauley from Macaulay Shanker Group, Survivor, Mark Bowles from Inve, Nugent Dokken, and a uh, guy down the Kings by the name of Brett Kaiser that's just a, a monster. Uh -huh. and so that's the track that Bumblefoot played on. It's called My Lonely Heart. And that's available on Spotify. But on the new record, I decided that I wanted to develop a little bit more of our own sound. Who are we? The, the, the one thing about the last record is because of all the different artists, every song has a little bit different tonality. And that's really cool. It was and the, the skills were just amazing on the record. But I wanted the songs to, to sound more consistent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we have Mark Bull singing on the entire record, and his voice is just unbelievable. Wow. He, uh, yeah, he, his range, his, his, uh, his, he's so smooth, it's just crazy. We do have three different guitar players on the record. I mentioned Michael James Romeo from Symphony X, but we also have Christian Brady from Hell Yeah. Oh, wow, and, nice. Uh, yeah, really nice. Christian's a really amazing guitar player, and plays very gilmore -ish things that I wanted on a couple pieces, kind of a little bit more of a Pink Floyd thing. Uh -huh. Stylistically on the guitar, the songs are, you know, much heavier than Pink Floyd. But uh, also Tony Allman from uh, Wine Cousier's Rat is in the band too. And, oh, and wow. he is just a mega monster. Tony's the guy that usually handles all of our neoclassical shredding. Okay. All those arpeggios and super fast things. Tony's, Tony's the guy for that. On bass, we have Greg Smith, East Coast God. So he was sending tracks out to us, and uh, Greg has played with everybody from Alice Cooper to Blue Acer Cult, uh, Rainbow, Dokken, Alan Parsons. Uh, it's just... Just a little bit of everything, it sounds like. <laughs> sick, sick bass player. And it was kind of cool, too, because Greg was really good buddies with Mikey Bones, who passed away. Uh -huh. And so Mikey's widow gave Greg um, a couple of... Mikey's bases, and Greg actually played those on the tracks on this new record, and that was really special and important to me. Oh, yeah. It, it just feels like the spirit of, of Mikey is, is still here with Renaissance Rock Orchestra, and a part of the project, and, and his bases were used on the track, so that's pretty neat. That's very cool. I have Brian Tishy, Brian Tishy on drums, uh, who played a number of tracks on the last record, and uh, he's the guy that's my drummer in the Moby Dick's Let's Up from All Stars. Mm -hmm. show here in Las Vegas and he is one of those powerful drummers alive. He is to me the living embodiment of John Bonham on drums. He Very is cool. a crazy <laughs> powerhouse and yeah, playing with him night after night with, with the Moby Dick's Let's Up and All Stars it is it's just amazing. He goes off on a on a drum solo where he, he's playing the Tiffany with his hands play the whole kit with his hands and he'll play for 15 or 20 minutes and then people are just sitting there with their jaws on the floor. <laughs> he's, he's so good. It's really a, definitely a thing to see. Very cool. So it's entertaining on top of being beautifully sounding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His skills are just sick. Nice. Absolutely sick. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, very cool. I'm, I'm super excited for this. Um, I, are there any shout outs you want to give tonight? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much to Christina via Artist Promotion. She's been doing such an amazing job for us. So thank you to Christina for setting this all up. And she is one of the most energetic, hardworking promoters I've ever seen. And we're just really, really happy to have her on board and, and to doing such an amazing job for us. Oh, yeah, she was, she's so super sweet. Yeah, big <laughs> love. Yeah, big love to Christina.
Alrighty, great. Well, um, I th want to thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I'm super excited for the new album. I hope that I get to see you uh, play or perform in person. That would be wonderful. Like you said, fingers crossed. Yeah, well, maybe uh, when I'm in December. December I guess. Hopefully sooner. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but I know it would be... You might see some, you might see some live streaming and some videos before December also. Awesome. As things are going, once we start playing, of course, we'll have lots of opportunities to do a lot of filming, a lot of shoots. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities to see us performing live. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm excited for that, and we will share everything on Rock Rage, so we are super excited here for that. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you, everybody at Rock Rage, and to you, Lily, I really appreciate the time, and enjoy the music. Make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to see all the new videos. Sounds great. Thank you.